Hi, I'm Warren, everybody. Um, you saw me put the new floor in uh, the passenger side in the truck, and um, this is kind of the other half of that job, really. I'll show you um, how it finished up. I did manage to lay my hands on some uh, bed liner here in the UK. So as you know, I put uh, two coats of uh, red oxide uh, primer down, and it's probably had another two or three coats of uh, bed liner on that side, and the inside looks absolutely peachy. You know, really pleased with it. The other, the other kind of uh, side of this job is uh, getting underneath the truck. So we put the new piece of steel in and we've welded it in from the inside. Now we've got to get underneath it. We've got to seam seal the, the edge of the new panel that we put in. And um, just want to make sure that all the joints are tight and close. And, um, and once we put the seam seal in, um, there may there may even be a couple of more spot welds underneath that we've um, got to do just to kind of uh, reinforce or uh, tidy up. Then we put the seam seal in, and then of course we've got to under seal it because if we don't get under the truck and do it from the bottom, which is where the weather is um, obviously going to get in, then uh, the entire repair was pretty pointless really. So. Like a lot of these old trucks, you know, on the top you lift the carpets up and the floor's all lovely, but you've got to get underneath to make sure that the repair was done on the on the bottom as well as the top of the new panel. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. But the, uh, you know, most interesting video you're ever going to watch, but uh, that was the uh, patch that we put on the gearbox housing. And we've just put some sealant and some uh, under seal over that to protect it from the weather okay everybody so that's um the sealant uh put on and i've done some uh, under seal and then i kind of went over what we did up at the uh, top of the wheel arch i've done exactly the same to the uh, gearbox housing that we um put a little kind of welded patch on so uh that's it um, that's the, the final all single all dancing repair now I've just got to put the inner wheel arch back in and uh, clean all my tools and uh, start to put everything away but feel a lot better now I've uh, under sealed that patch so we've repaired it and painted it on the inside we've repaired it and painted it on the outside Doing a little bit more work on the truck um, once the new floor was welded in the next thing I had to put in was um, new mud flap uh, kind of holders and uh, what I went for is I went for a galvanized uh, piece of steel the other ones were rotten away here we go so that was the old uh, mud flap that uh, had seen better days and um, I used that as a template to uh, cut a new one ready to go on I've had to sort of trim it slightly because it goes around the side step and the um, kind of rock rail on the side of the truck but uh, this is the uh, new one that's going in uh, should be a two minute job the only thing about this of course is the uh, although this won't rust because it's galvanized the bolts that hold it in place so I've got some uh, zinc primer going to put a drop of that on and then cover the bolts in a bit of under seal uh, just the obvious lay all your tools out to do the job makes it all a lot easier got everything i need there and i can uh, reach it from underneath the truck <clears throat> so that's the new mud flap holder i haven't squeezed the bolt into that corner you know because it's it's not exactly load bearing and uh that corner is a kind of um it's got two or three sort of joints you know and i kind of think to drill through the joint is just sort of asking for trouble really so um I think I'm going to leave that one out, but you can see uh, all the mud that's been kind of flipped up by the wheel. You know, so your mud flaps obviously serve a pretty, uh, pretty important um, uh, role. You know, and if you do lose one, it's um, it's definitely worth uh, just you know buying a cheap mud flap and just replacing it. So I'm going to uh, get this flap on there and get it bolted into place, and that'll be the end of this job on this side. Okay, so you can see I've had to cut it around the uh, side step, but um, that's a new mud flap in on a galvanised uh, mud flap hanger. Uh, steel bolts, but I'm going to put a little bit of under seal on those just to protect them from the weather. Another little job done. That's the last bit really of renewing the floor on the passenger side. So uh, today we're going to start chopping out the driver's side, a couple of other jobs.
that um, Mark 19 ammo can is um, my little prop. I mean, they are uh, super strong, as anybody that's ever picked one up will know. Whenever I put the car on the uh, uh, car stands, you know, little ramps, I always put that box under the diff because, of course, if one of the uh, ramps does fail, it just gives you that little bit more time to get out from underneath it. But obviously, if you're working under there, and uh, something happened, chances are no one would even know you were there, you know. But uh, that's my little trick. Uh, that's the um, underneath of the truck finished with for today, but we've got another couple of little jobs that I'm gonna share with it. Not sure I ever got around to showing you that, but that's the 13,500 pound discrete winch mount. Uh, you saw me put the plate in. Well, there's, there's the winch, and uh, very lovely it is too it's probably as powerful a winch as you're gonna get and in truth you know most people wouldn't even know it was there yeah sorry here's an absolutely imperative you know if you're working under this truck if you've got it on uh, axle stands or uh, car ramps you know you've got to check chop the wheels this uh, Land Rover jacking system comes with that little chock and I've got two of those from uh, the old truck that I had so I always uh, chock the, the uh, front and the rear wheels if I can in this instance I've chopped both the rear wheels Since I uh, saw you last I fitted the uh, external snorkel to the truck. Now it was really uh, straightforward to fit. What it was, was a um, kind of cheap kit from China really, but I mean a snorkel's a, a tube, you know, it's just an air uh, intake. I've seen people make them out of guttering before now, but uh, this was uh, quite tidy. Like I say, it was a kit from China, come to 80 pound delivered, which uh, I kind of thought for something I would rarely use if ever it was uh, the right money. Uh, there's a paper template that you literally just put on the wing, uh, stick it in place, and you drill five eight millimeter holes, and then what you do is you get what's called a step drill, and you take those holes out to 16 millimeters, and I'll show you the step drill I'll in a second. I'll show you what a step drill is, and this is a step drill. Uh, starts off at uh, kind of two mil, and it goes, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten, all the way up, in this case, to he says desperately trying to see it without his glasses up to uh, 32 mil but it's called a step drill uh, if you haven't got one in your toolbox I guarantee it's worth investing in because if uh, if and when you drill a hole in a slightly wrong place you can just step it out you know put a wash on each side you know it's a, not the end of the world but a great little tool I have to turn around and say you probably won't use it very often but when you do want it, it'll be worth its weight in gold. Down here, just here, is where the snorkel comes into the body of the truck and then it goes into your air filter box. If you want to know more about kind of how it's done step by step in detail, then just go to the description box and click on that film and you'll see um, how it was done. But uh, very simply, you're going to get on and kind of drill this out now and uh, um, fit all the internal kind of air box for, ready for if and when I ever need the snorkel. So this is an 86 mil uh, hole cutting uh, saw and then you have to have the kind of cradle to carry it you know so perhaps if you go onto the internet or whatever and you think oh, I just need one of these you know you're going to have to have a carrier for it as well and it comes with an 8 mil drill bit all it does is it just literally kind of screws in place as you tighten this screw down, so you get a couple of uh, little kind of plungers that start to um, protrude from the from the other side. And what they do, I don't know if you can see those, but there's two little kind of plungers that are coming up from the bottom, and they literally kind of hold it in place and stop it spinning. And uh, there you go, that's ready to kind of rock and roll. So we're going to drill our eight millimeter pilot hole and then once we get through the pilot hole the circular cutting uh, hole saw is going to do its magic on the aluminium on the inner wing. I'm not too worried about the exact sort of precise location of this because uh, it's an 86 millimeter hole and what we need is really uh, space for a 70 millimeter pipe.
go around that now with a uh, piece of sandpaper, take all the burrs off. Then I'm going to put some touch-up paint on it and then we'll be fitting the airbox. So I've got a little body uh, colour touch-up paint and I've just literally uh, zipped around the inner edge of the uh, hole that we've just cut. This is just some sort of general purpose uh, black spray paint and uh, that should uh, leave that to dry, that should just make sure we don't get any rust. Okay let's talk about the kit. The, the kit really came with every possible screw and nut and bolt and clip that you could need and what you had to do was kind of retain some of the old ones uh, off of the uh, the air box when you kind of took it out and modified it but uh, just try to show you that's what I've got left over of the kit um, every every rivet some rivets were painted black to match the body trim some were um, uh, silver these clips are what's actually going to attach the air box to the snorkel that we fitted and then seal it up but I was quite pleased with it there were no instructions with it uh, but like I say, if you want to fit one, go to the link um, that's in the description box and the guy there is a qualified mechanic, I'm assuming, and he fitted it brilliantly and I've literally just followed his instructions. But that's uh, what I've got left of the kit. There are these two brackets. I don't think we need both of them. I think it's a kind of either or. But what we've got to do is we've got to move the air box from being right next to the inner wing to being slightly uh, nearer to the engine in order to give us room to um, run this um, air tube. So this is the part that goes through the hole in the wing that we have just drilled and that will be held in place by a uh, Jubilee clip and they'll be um, uh, connected together. All we've got to do is take out the inner wing uh, the, the plastic inner wing kind of wheel arch again and um, that will give us access to put these two things together this is your air intake and this is what goes into the original air box on a Land Rover so here's your original air box and where it where your air intake would normally have gone on the Land Rover would be at the front here now in the kit the kit comes with a sort of blanking plate and what I've done is I've glued it in place here with um, in truth not sealant I used some um, exterior no more nails adhesive and um, it just kind of fits in a treat I am thinking about maybe uh, zipping this down you know maybe taking uh, five or ten mils off of it because it does protrude slightly and I've put the dual battery system in the truck so I'm wondering if that might be a bit tight but I think it'll be okay to sort of trim it down you know 10 mils or something like that um, but I won't bother to do that unless I absolutely have to another thing that um, like I said because we're moving the, the air box from the inner wing into the center of the engine the box used to stand on two legs one here and one here and uh, what you have to do is you have to trim those off with a hacksaw and this new plate comes as part of the kit so uh, as you can see it kind of fits around the airport it tells you so that in itself tells you exactly where it's got to go there are four holes four um, rivets come with the kit uh, remember to kind of seal it I put sealant around the holes and just a bead of sealant around the bottom because what we're trying to do is to stop water ingress the same with this this is now sealed up but you have to relocate this air intake and in the kit you get this new plate and again, you know, it comes with three rivets. Um, I have uh, put it in place, drawn around it with my white crayon that I showed you, drilled the three rivets, put it in place, rivet it in place, and that's where the new air intake is going to go. So that end is going to come from the snorkel. This end is going to go onto the new uh, port for the air box. So the other thing we've got to do with the air box is we've got to make sure that it is airtight. So in the airbox, a uh, typical Land Rover airbox comes with uh, lots of little holes in it to tell you the truth. And um, these two big holes here, 
you've got two of these plugs and these are the plugs that go through the inner wing and actually sort of um, uh, hold the airbox in place or help to hold the airbox in place but they also give it a little bit of room to vibrate you know because these are rubber so when you put these back in here same again a little bit of sealant so that um, the airbox is uh, watertight I went around the inside of the box and where I thought there was any possibility of kind of water ingress what I've done is I've just put some um, some sealant you know so you can see I've um, aired on the side of caution and anything that looked like a little hole I've kind of sealed up uh, same on the outside you know I've sort of gone around the outside of the box sort of here and here really I had a couple of uh, little spots that I wasn't uh, uh, completely sort of um, uh, convinced so I've just put some sealant in those as well but the air box has to has to now be watertight because remember you know it's a snorkel so in effect the vehicle will be able to go through water probably up to the bottom of the windscreen if you've got a uh, well-equipped snorkel there's a couple of other bits and pieces that you'll have to fit you'll have to fit a wading kit if you're going to go kind of that extreme and I may at some point they're not a lot of money um, and they're pretty straightforward to fit you know so why not go the whole hog uh, you know when you don't need it sort of thing but that's the new air box that's all kind of modified I bought this corrugated tube which wasn't uh, expensive but what I thought that what I thought this tube would do would allow me to join uh, to just take the k and air filter out of here put the tube in uh, secure the tube into the uh, snorkel air intake so now I, I haven't got an air filter in the system and then take the k and air filter off and put it in the top of the take the snorkel. k and air filter off and literally just kind of move it up here and take this piece off it's only held on by a jubilee clip put the uh, k and filter in there so that's my filter this is all the air intake into the engine and that goes straight into the engine and i reckon you know two jubilee clips uh, would um, probably be a five minute job and that would give me uh, an activated snorkel in preparation for some sort of deep water crossing or flooding or whatever um, and that's my kind of plan with the help of this little additional piece of corrugated tubing repair for the floor uh, the hole that this little grommet went in is um, corroded and rusted so I sort of dug it out this is just a new piece and in truth all I'm going to do is to use um, some uh, adhesive just to uh, stick it in place but I've still got the draining hole for the floor if I need to get water out okay so that's a uh, another lost Sunday afternoon I've got um, one more seam to weld up which is about 12 or 14 inches long but it's just started raining so uh, rain stopped play uh, I'll be um, seam sealing it and I'll be under sealing it just like I did last time so um, no great uh, mysteries there but uh, that's uh, pretty much all the welding done as far as I know the um, MOT our um, yearly inspection is due in uh, May so I'm getting ready for that uh, it's probably gonna need a couple of tires I think and uh, I'm thinking about putting uh, uh, BF Goodrich uh, all-terrain tires all around so um, uh, I think the ones that I've had on there have done me proud but the front two are starting to wear and I'm a great advocate of um, you know changing tyres and keeping them all the same, so uh, I think that's what I'll be doing. Um, please feel free to um, thumbs up, like, share. Uh, I'm getting near to my uh, 10,000 uh, subscribers, which is just unbelievable. You know, everybody that's followed me on my little journey, you know, a heartfelt uh, thank you and um, I'm going to um, take a step forward I'm going to start putting uh, a lot more films up 
Uh, I've got uh, access to uh, 175 acres of uh, farm and uh, open countryside, so I'm going to be doing a lot more. So, uh, as always, any comments? Love to hear them. Thanks.